Orthopaedics, a medical science that has been practiced for the last four centuries, a treatment that has changed millions of lives. Since its beginnings, hundreds of new procedures, plates and implants have been developed to fill the need of the ever-evolving population. Today, implants are designed for both children and adults of all shapes and sizes. They cater for the needs of elderly patients across the age ranges to small children. However, it hasn't always been this way. To understand the history of orthopaedics, we must understand the meaning of the word itself. If we break up the word into two parts, the first, ortho, translates as the Latin word for straight or upright. The second, pedix, derived from the Latin word pays to mean child or children. So a simple translation of the word becomes straight child, which is where the practice originates from. The original purpose of orthopedic surgery and procedures was for the correction and healing of children with limb deformities. The groundbreaking pioneer in the field of orthopaedics was a French physician called Nicolas André. He thought children to be likened to trees. When they begin, or in a child's case are born, it is possible for them to be bent or disfigured. However, with the use of straps, braces and splints, their growth can be used as a tool to straighten their bones and return them to normal. He published his theories and procedures in a book entitled Orthopedi in the year 1741. André's diagram of his procedure for straightening has today become the well-known symbol of orthopaedic industry. From the 18th to the 20th century, new methods and mechanisms such as traction were introduced to help children. These new methods utilize the same philosophy as André had all those years ago. Although this was happening, there was a big gap in the market for products which would provide the same treatment for the adult population. This gap saw the invention of the orthopaedic implant. Because adults didn't have the luxury of growth to help them heal, adjustments had to be made under the skin. Using plates, screws and nails, surgeons were able to shape and repair the bodies of the crippled and deformed. The implants were a big money business and were not only able to heal deformities, but also to fix broken bones and worn out bones. This became a very big market, as heavy industry at the time was often the cause of trauma in adults. As the adult implant market grew, the child brace and splint market became less attractive to companies. Often, surgeons would try to get away with the use of adult implants on children. They would have them cut down and reshaped in theatres to fit the patient, but they were quite often defective and had to be removed. There were possibilities for child size implants to be created, but because the market was so small, no company was willing to take the risk of investing. That is, until the creation of orthopediatrics. Orthopediatrics is an orthopedic implant company based in uh, Warsaw, Indiana, in the USA, uh, dedicated to the design, development, and distribution of orthopedic implants for pediatric patients and their caregivers. The company was established to find to uh, develop better solutions for the care of pediatric patients, uh, patients with musculoskeletal issues who are skeletally immature, uh, to divide, design anatomically, anatomically appropriate implants and solutions to take care of those patients. Well, when we were introduced, a lot of us recognized that the bulk majority of the implants that were used in children were actually adult implants and were approved by various regulatory bodies for use in the adult patient population and were simply designed uh, for the adult in mind and uh, surgeons were forced to use the smallest adult implant to try to make it work in kids. And so we felt like creating anatomic solutions and solutions and products that were designed specifically for that patient would make the surgeries easier and ultimately have better outcomes for kids. Well, I think that overall the industry started, um, you know, the, the industry used to be in things like casting and K-wires and pretty much small things. Uh, and I think that the overall industry is so large and the adult marketplace is so large that a focus on the pediatric patient uh, really wasn't, wasn't the focus. Uh, I think the industry as a whole recognizes or believes that our market is relatively small. 
Uh, but Orthopediatrics, we believe the global marketplace for our products is nearly $3 billion in total uh, for anatomically appropriate implants, devices uh, for children. And so uh, it's an un, it's an unproven uh, market. Uh, and the bigger orthopedic companies, I believe, focus primarily exclusively on things that are, are known markets. And, you know, compared to a $30 billion global market for adult products, uh, our, small, our market looks relatively small. Well, I think we have been making a success in the market in that we're growing substantially, you know, doubling nearly year over year. And uh, it's really how we've been able to do that has been exclusive focus on the pediatric patient population and the surgeons that take care of those. In the U.S. alone, there's about a thousand surgeons that focus exclusively on pediatric orthopedics. They're not taking care of adult uh, adult patients, and on globally, we feel like that number is probably closer to 2,500, if not 3,000, on a global basis. And I think we've been very successful in partnering very specifically with those surgeons uh, with the with the data to to help us develop products and the ideas to help us develop products such that they can uh, impact the lives of kids. That, that's really the our focus, exclusive focus on pediatrics has been how we've been successful so far and I suspect will be how we'll be successful in the future. The creation of implants specific to a child's anatomy have resulted in far more successful surgery for both the surgeon and the patient. Well there are quite a number of fundamental differences between the uh, bone of adults and children. Uh, the obvious difference is that they are, children are smaller, generally speaking. Um, this does have a bearing on how you manage them in theatre because uh, there are anaesthetic implications, particularly on much younger children. Um, generally in a fit, healthy child that doesn't pose any problems, but many hospitals in the UK now uh, have strict criteria for the uh, anaesthetic that's used on children and who can anaesthetise children. And many hospitals won't anaesthetise children under the age of two. Until very, uh, fairly recent times, the majority of children's injuries were treated conservatively, by that I mean without course to um, an implant being used. Um, traditionally, patients have been treated with plasters. Uh, it was not uncommon for children to be kept in bed for many weeks on some form of traction. And uh, orthopedic hospitals around the country, up until perhaps 25 years ago, frequently had patients who were kept in bed for many weeks being treated conservatively for their injuries and it has to be said that they all invariably did well. In recent years the concept of guided growth has been introduced. This is not a new concept, it's just being given a new term in, in effect. And we know that it, whether the child is injured or has some deformity because uh, their grow, the growing part of their bone has been damaged by some metabolic condition, by trauma or by some genetic condition that we can utilise any future growth either in the limb that's affected or sometimes on an unaffected limb we can utilise that growth to produce correction. A simple example would be a child who has one leg shorter than another um, and what we can do there is utilise very simple implants little plates to go across the growth plate of the unaffected leg which will slow down the growth of that leg thereby allowing the other leg to catch up in growth. Similarly that can be used if you have deformity such as knock knees or bow legs around the knees where you can just put a little plate on one side of the leg allowing the slower part of the leg to catch up and this is called guided growth. Um, and there have been many techniques over the years described to do it. It's now evolved into having some quite nice equipment, but very simple techniques have been used in the past, either just drilling out growth plates or even just putting little staples across them. Um, in recent years, there's been further advances by the implant companies in the use of child-specific implants. Uh, prior to this, very often we had to modify existing adult implants. Um, for example, if we were using a femoral nail, we may have to saw it short in order to use it. Uh, other problems with femoral nails is that the entry point at the top end of the thigh bone in youngsters, um, you can interfere with the blood supply uh, and cause difficulties with the head of the femur and possibly cause arthritis. So new implants have been devised to get around this problem. Um, in addition, um, minimally invasive techniques have been um, put on the, on the market which makes it less traumatic for children. 
One of the advantages of using implants over conservative measures obviously is that you can mobilise the children much more quickly, enabling them to get home from hospital, which causes less family disruption, and in addition, schooling and things like that are less disrupted. So, from the 18th to the 21st century, orthopaedic surgery has gone in a complete circle and is once again today becoming about the child. The future is bright for paediatric orthopaedics as more and more implants, plates and procedures are being developed to meet the needs of the child once again.